Welcome back to Betsy Hackle Beauty. Today I am going to use my lovely mom as a model to show you how to do an everyday makeup look on mature skin. First we're going to start with some skin prep, making sure her skin is very nice and hydrated. So I'm just going to take this Evian mist, mist that all over the face, make sure she's nice and hydrated. Next I'm going to use the Tatcha The Essence. This is a plumping skin softener that provides deep hydration and maximizes the performance of your makeup. Right into your palm of your hands, rub it together, and just press and pat all into the skin. Before we go in with any makeup, I'm going to take the Clinique Moisture Surge. This is the 96 hour hydro filler concentrate. So this I'm going to put right in your under eyes and let it sit. So I put a very small amount on my fingers. I'm going to have you look up. We're just going to pat it right into the under eye area on both sides. So my absolute favorite product for mature skin is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I love this because it is a two-in-one, a moisturizer and a primer, and it is water-based, so pretty much anyone can use this. And I like that it combines the moisturizer and primer so that you're not necessarily clouding up the skin with a ton of different products. And I'm doing this before I do any of her eye makeup because I really want it to sit and sink into the skin. We're now gonna prime the eyes for eyeshadow. So I'm using the MAC Pink Pot in shade Soft Ochre. And I'm gonna use a flat synthetic brush to apply this. This all over both of her eyelids and we're just gently putting it on, not smacking on a ton of product all at once. One thing is with mature eyes, if you can turn this way, you'll see there's usually a little bit of creasing. So take your thumb on the eyebrow, pull up a little bit so you can make sure you smooth the product all over the lid. I then usually take a dampened beauty blender just to kind of smooth it out, make sure there's no harsh lines or anything. For an everyday eyeshadow look, I use some of the brown tones with a little bit of a pink shimmer on the eyelid. So first I'm gonna start in with this brown beige transition shade and I'm gonna put that all over a lot of the lid. So here again is where you want to hold up the eyelid you're just going to start slowly building in some color in the crease. And I would suggest going in lightly with a soft fluffy brush because the eyelid is going to move. The skin is going to be a bit looser. And so you're just going to want to be gentle going all over the lid. And again, in, I'm not taking it super heavy into the inner corner because we want to brighten up and open up the eyes and not drag them down. Now I'm just going to go in with a slightly darker shade. This is a little bit deeper brown just to define the outer corners and give her eyes a little bit of depth. I'm just going to start in the outermost portion of her eyelid. We're just going to tap in the color ever so slightly so we can determine exactly where we want it to go. And I'm kind of just pulling it into her bottom lash line, which will add a little bit of definition, bringing it gently up into the crease. And I like doing the eyes before the rest of the face, because then if there's any areas that you need to clean up with makeup wipes, makeup remover, and so forth, you can do so. I'm now gonna take this really pretty pink shimmer champagne shade on a flat synthetic brush. I'm gonna put this all over the lid just to brighten it up. So here again, it's important that you'll want to lift it up so you don't have any crease in and pat the color onto the lid. We don't want to drag it over. You can drag a little bit at short strokes, but you really want to pat it on for the best color payoff. You can also use your fingers. So as you can see, we have the darkest color out here, building into the pretty shimmer, and we have a nice transition shade going on top. Now going to go in with the Becker Under Eye Shimmering Brightening Corrector. So this is absolutely fantastic if you have dark circles. It acts as just a light reflector and brightener. So I'm gonna put that directly on my mom's under eye area here. So I'm just patting it all in there. Make sure it's absorbed before we go in with anything else. Next I'm gonna do a little bit color correcting. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector in shade medium. So I'm just going to take a little bit on a synthetic brush, tap that in there, and then we're going to go in just on the spots that we want to color correct. So 
So I'm just gonna go right into these areas right here, only placing the product where we need it. We're also take your finger because it's a little bit warmer and press the product in. When I'm doing it on myself, I usually just use my fingers to do this because I think it applies nicer. Something that I like to do on a lot of my wedding clients is use a bit of a luminizer. So this is the Chanel one. There are so many affordable ones out there. I just wanted to try this one, so I've been using it lately. Basically, this just gives the base of your makeup a nice glowy finish. So we're just going to take a little bit of this. It's extremely lightweight. I'm going to just put it all over kind of more of the T-zone area and hit the cheeks. For everyday makeup on mature skin, I personally like to use a tinted moisturizer rather than foundation because foundation can just be really heavy on the skin. So my mom picked up this one from Chanel at my recommendation. I'm going to go in with a bit of a dampened beauty blender just to evenly spread out the product. So we're just going to start tapping it all over and into the skin. This is not gonna be super full coverage, but again, I think for an everyday look and wear, it's gonna look very nice. Cause my main goal with using this um, tinted moisturizer is just to even out her skin tone, kind of cover up some of that redness and just make her look flawless. And I think something to, important to remember is to always take whatever's left over on your brush or sponge and kind of go a little bit down into your neck or chin area, sides of your face, because you want to make sure everything is blended in really nicely and we don't have any lines that look, you know, whoa, she's wearing foundation and it's stopping there. You want everything to blend effortlessly. I'm now going to go in with the Instant Age Rewind Concealer from Maybelline. This is fantastic, super creamy, looks great on. I use this on a lot of my clients and I'm going to take a domed fluffy brush to gently put in the product. I put a bunch on my hand. We're just kind of swirling it around and I'm just kind of putting it right in these areas and I'm just gently swirling it around, highlighting the areas that we want to highlight, getting out a little bit. I'm also going to bring a little bit onto the chin to brighten that area. So the really hydrating concealer, I think it looks great. It's not super heavy. Sometimes using something like a Tarte Shape Tape can be a little much and a bit drying on mature skin. So I like to use something very creamy and natural finish looking. I also then take the Beauty Blender, as you can see, and I press it into the skin. If anything starts to look a little bit cakey, you can also Take your fingers and hold it onto the areas that you're trying to kind of make sink a bit more into the skin just because you have a nice warmth on your fingers. So it works really nicely. So the point of concealer is just to brighten up areas, cover some dark spots. So don't feel like you need to go overboard. Like if there's a little bit of redness here still, I'm just gonna kind of tap on the concealer just to brighten it up a little bit. I'm just using what is left on my brush. I have not dipped back in at all. I'm now gonna take a little bit of finely milled loose powder. This one is from Lancome. And I'm gonna take it on the damp beauty sponge that we've been using throughout the process. See here, we got a little bit in there. We're gonna just tap the end of the beauty blender in there. We're gonna take it on the edge, scrape a big chunk of that off. And we're just gonna go in and kind of set some of those areas very gently to give a mattified look. I'm not going to go all the way out into the cheeks because we are going to go in with a little bit of a cream blush. And you can also take a little bit if you look up and kind of set a little bit of that under eye area. I do not take a lot of powder. I take a very fine amount and I'm just gently tapping. I'm now going to go in with a bit of a cream blush. I like to use this palette by Makeup Forever just because it has all the different colors. I can mix and match as I do clients, but I would suggest picking up a cream blush just because it looks a little bit more skin-like. And you can always top it with a little bit of powder, but cream's going to definitely last really long on skin. So I've taken a little bit onto a synthetic brush. 
and we're just gonna start out here. I'm gonna feel for cheekbones. I'm just gonna start gently tapping it into the skin. I kind of almost do a circular motion. And I'm gonna focus on the outer parts of the cheekbone to give a very lifted natural look. Just adding a little bit of flush of color to the face right now. I'm gonna to top it off with the Clinique Blush Press Powder in Smoldering Plum. So I'm just taking a fluffy brush. We're just gonna go right on top, just pressing it into the skin. Really brings out the color and it melts and looks really nice with the cream color that we just put on. For bronzer, I like using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting. This is their Diffuse Bronzer Powder. And I like using this one because it has more of a glowy finish rather than being super matte and looking dried down. So again, we're just taking our brush, swirling it all in there. I'm gonna go right under where I did this blush and kind of blend it in together. So this is just gonna warm up the face. Just doing small circular motions right in with the blush. With mature skin, you want everything to be up and lifted, so going upward motions, not dragging anything down. Now going back in with a little bit of that loose setting powder. I did it on a fluffy flathead brush. We're now going to do a little bit of powder on some of the areas that are looking a little shiny. And you can also take this if you ever think that you did the blush or the um, contour too heavy, you can always take setting powder to diffuse. Next, we're gonna go in and do the brows. I like using this Benefit Cosmetics Pro Palette just because it has powders and creams. I use this in combination with some True Pencils. Um, I really like using powders and creams though because they're not as harsh on the face um, and it gives a more youthful look. So here, we're just gonna take the spoolie. I'm gonna brush up the eyebrow hairs. And one thing with mature skin, try to follow the natural brow shape rather than creating your own brow shape unless there are um unless there's not a lot of eyebrow there so i'm starting in this powder area with my angled brush now i'm just going to start lining the top of our eyebrow hairs with the powder again we're not creating any new shapes we are just following the natural shape here and i would say not to make the eyebrows too heavy or dark, but you do want to just add a little bit of oomph to them. So my mom already has really nice, long, thick eyebrow hairs, so there's not a ton that I need to do to it. So I'm just filling in with the powder. We're going to go out to this outer corner. I'm going to more pull it out rather than down to lift up the eye area. You can see it just really opens up and defines and brightens the eye area compared to nothing. So as you can see, we didn't do anything crazy. We just followed the natural shape. All we did was just give it a little extra color and oomph, which I think is important if you just want a natural everyday look. So now I'm going to add a little bit of a navy blue eyeliner to her eyes. I'm not going to use black just because sometimes that can be a little too harsh. This is actually a nice cream shadow and I'm going to use an angled brush. We're just going to get a little bit of the product and color on the brush. Then I'm going to go in to her eyelids. So we're going to just start again. You're going to want to pull up and then we're going to go right along her lash line with the brush. This will look very soft and pretty and really make her eye color pop. Again, I'm just smudging it out, smoothing it out. We're not doing anything super drastic here. We're going for natural glam. I also really like using a brush on mature eyelids because sometimes the pencils can be a little harsh or pointed and be uncomfortable. So a brush is nice and soft. It allows you to precisely place the product exactly where you want it to go, but also give a bit of a smoldering effect. So you can see I'm not being exact with it, but we're just kind of going in, 
smudging out the color just so we have a bit of a definition. So when she opens her eyes, boom, they pop and look gorgeous. If you're ever feeling tired, I suggest using the Tarte Fake Awake Eyeliner. It's just a beige colored eyeliner, which I'm gonna use on her waterline to just brighten up her eyes. So if you just look up, just take it and you place it right along the waterline. Just gives you that, I just woke up feeling. But then you can see it instantly just looks lifted and brighter. I'm gonna take a little bit of that same navy blue eyeliner and I am going to just take a little bit along lower lash line, just ever so slightly. Make sure you connect it with the top. Just bringing it in very gently. It's gonna help just make the eyes really pop. Now for mascara, I'm just gonna take the Clinique High Impact Waterproof Mascara. This is just a very nice, um, gentle mascara that's gonna stay put all day, especially if you do have oily eyelids or are prone to mascara smudging under your eyes. This is a great one. You definitely wanna pick up something that is waterproof that'll stay all day. So I'm just gonna take it out, spoolie. You might just wanna wipe off a little bit of excess that's on there. Take it here, I'm gonna pull up the eyelashes and the eyelid. We're just gonna put on a very nice base coat. Now, if you really wanna get crazy, you can add some lashes here, but we're going for some everyday glam. The next product I like to use is again, another Hourglass Diffused Light. It's a shade Dim Light, and I like this as a finishing powder. It just really catches the light and gives that blurred skin effect. So I just take it and I just gently put it all, all over the skin. And if you really want to get fancy, you can top it off with some beautiful light highlighter. I wouldn't go in with anything too crazy or glittery, but again, we're just going to kind of dust it on our upper cheekbones, a little bit on the nose. I do a little bit of the Cupid's bow just to give it that little extra oh. Finally, to complete the look, we're going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Liner and corresponding lipstick. I like these, it's a beautiful pink nude. I feel like it is complimentary on everybody. So we're just gently aligning our lips with this. It's gonna define that Cupid's bow a little bit more. This lip liner is really great on any skin because I feel like it just glides so effortlessly and smoothly, whereas some lip liners can be a little drying and hard to move around. Now I'm going in with the lipstick. Gently over where we did the lip liner. I feel like my mother never wears this color, so this will be funny to see. You can always add in a little bit of gloss right over if you just wanna zhuzh it up a bit. 